one thing has been played in my mind. What is the impact of AI on science? I've discussed this with all manner of scientists, professors, postdocs, PhD students, and there's a common thread. They're all concerned that this could be bad for science. Some think it could be good, but they're still wary. So how is AI changing science and should we be wary? Let's discuss it. Artificial intelligence is developing so rapidly that it is frightening and it has far reaching consequences for our society as a whole. The emergence of AI is so disruptive that it may completely change the world in a way that hasn't been observed since the industrial revolution. Science, which is often held as a bastion of integrity, a place where the truth is paramount and personal gain is absence, is not immune to the omnipresence of AI. In reality, science is still performed by people that are just as corruptible as everybody else and whose self-interests can perturb the idealistic view of science. AI offers an opportunity to deliver science into a new regime of productivity and discovery, but it could also stagnate science and cripple the development of the next generation of scientists. In either case, AI will fundamentally change the world and with it, how we conduct science. To begin with, why should we be worried about AI's influence on science? Well, it has already proven to be unreliable, biased, and doesn't give insight into how it comes up with its conclusions, which is why AIs are often referred to as black boxes. They give an output, but you can't see inside the box to determine why. But humans are also unreliable and biased. And to be honest, reading through some theoretical physics papers almost feels like the author doesn't want me to understand how they formed their conclusions. So maybe we are not really any better. But let's unpack these problems with AI a little more. Research has shown that AI can be racist, sexist, and is likely to reflect most discriminatory behaviors that our society has. But being unreliable and biased is actually a product of the people and the data involved in the AI, not the AI itself. And we should be all very concerned about this aspect, not just in science, but in our society as a whole. There are many examples of how AI has embodied these negative traits. I will give just two of these. The first is Amazon's attempt to make even more money by using AI to perform the hiring process. They developed an AI that would screen people's CVs to find good candidates. At the surface level, this seems like a good idea. They get many applications, so they should have a large database to train the AI on to find the patterns that indicate good employees. But they predominantly hire men, and as such, the AI became biased. In effect, Amazon's system taught itself that male candidates were preferable, and it penalized resumes that included the words women's. But this problem isn't just an issue for Amazon. Many companies and institutions face the same problem. The next example is a tool called Compass that is used in the US to help make decisions about pretrial release and sentencing. By giving a score between one and 10 to quantify how likely a person is to be rearrested if released. But the program was much more prone to mistakenly label black defendants as likely to reoffend wrongly flagging them at almost twice the rate as white people, 45% compared to the actual percentage of 24%. The important aspect of both of these examples, and more that I haven't mentioned, is that AI becomes biased because the training data or the system that it is modeling has these traits. One researcher into bias in these systems put it this way, we took bad data in the first place, and then we used AI tools to make it worse. The quintessential problem is that the information we feed the machines reflects the biases and inequalities in our own society. Machines on their own are not racist, but if we give them biased data or algorithms, their decisions will amplify discrimination. This is a serious issue and we need to address this because some 55% of US human resources managers said AI would be a regular part of their work within the next five years. Meaning that very soon, all of these biases that we are trying to remove from our society may become set in stone 
because we've become so reliant on AI that reflects these values. Some researchers used to believe that AI could be a route to correct these biases by taking the human element out of the equation, but they might turn out to do the exact opposite. It's easy to describe these issues in a social context, but these will also be mirrored in science. Certain methodologies will be favored because they are currently favored. This could lead to a stifling of scientific innovation. Moreover, if we become so reliant on AI to perform these tasks, we might lose the ability to think critically and imagine new solutions to these problems. Effectively stagnating science, not a prospect that any of us want. Of course, the adaptation of AI will lead to a short-term increase of discoveries, but long-term, it could be devastating. There is another issue with AI, is that it is a black box. But we'll get back to this soon. First, let's discuss where AI is actually making strides in helping science. Artificial intelligence has one distinct advantage over us. It can process large sets of data and find patterns in that data that are not obvious to us. This is where we are already leveraging AI to find these patterns so we can identify the root causes behind something. Anything that has a lot of data, but we don't know why something happens, is a candidate for AI-improved science. And there are plenty of examples already. An AI model identified an antibiotic to combat a pathogen that the World Health Organization labeled as one of the worst, most dangerous antibiotic-resistant bacteria for hospital patients. Earth 2 is an AI model that uses tens of terabytes of Earth system data to predict the next two weeks of weather tens of thousands of times faster and more accurate than current forecasting models. And the US Food and Drug Administration has already cleared 523 devices that use AI, where 75% of them are for use in radiology. Beyond finding solutions for problems, AI is also being used to gather information for our understanding. Tools like PaperQA and Elicit harness AI to scan databases of articles and produce summaries of existing literature, citations included. So not only is it already solving problems for us, it is becoming a vital tool for developing scientific knowledge to begin with. But there is a catch, as there so often is. AI typically finds a pattern or comes to a conclusion, but doesn't tell us any information about why it came to that conclusion. This is the so-called black box problem. We give the black box data and it outputs an answer. This is great for when we don't care why it came up with an answer and we only care that it is correct. But in science, we wanna know the why. Crucial details are in the why. People are investigating neural networks that are not black boxes, but they are often difficult to produce and lack the complexity required to solve interesting problems. But don't worry, there are solutions. If we can't identify why an AI is making a decision, we can make another AI to do it for us. One way this is done is with a complex type of neural network known as a Generative Adversary Network, or GAN. A typical GAN consists of a pair of networks. One generates data, an image of a street for example, and another tries to determine whether the output is real or fake. Using this method, the trickster AI determines what information is crucial to the decision process of the other. Another technique is detector randomized input sampling for explanation, or DRISE, as a little easier. This is more systematic and randomly removes information from the input to the AI to see what information is crucial. For example, researchers take a photo of a vase full of flowers and systematically block out different parts of the image before showing the AI task with identifying a particular object, such as the vase. They then record how obscuring each cluster of pixels affects the accuracy of the result, as well as telling the system to color code the whole photo according to how important each part was to the recognition process. This can produce a heat map of what information is important for image reconstruction. However, if this can be extended to more complex AIs, this could be a great technique for determining how they make their decisions. 
And even better, it can be applied to existing AIs rather than having to build new ones with features that allow us to extract more information from them. The last issue that we're facing in AI integration into science is over-reliance on these tools, which may lead to a situation where we can't develop useful skills anymore. In some cases, they are skills that we might not really need anyway. But other skills are vital for the functioning of our society and the development of science. Our ability to write also gives us a fundamental understanding of argumentative forms and debate. For politics to function well, which I think we all question if it does at the moment, it needs to have a strong debate of ideas. But if all the debates are written by AI and people listening don't write or contextualize their own thoughts in this fashion, how are they meant to make decisions on what is a better idea? Should they just get an AI to make the decisions? Political parties are already using psychology to trick people into voting for them. And AI might just hand them the tools to be even more successful at this. We can extend the same line of thought to science. How will we be able to determine which science is more rigorous and valid if it is all written by AI? We might lose our ability to discern this when we don't engage in this thought process ourselves. To make it even harder, if everyone uses AI for writing research articles, everything will be written to the same quality by the AI. It is not just writing that we may lose. People are suggesting AI for pretty much everything. When we sign on to this, we need to understand that once we start using AI to perform these tasks, we will become worse at the tasks ourselves. And the next generation of scientists will grow up never knowing how to perform these tasks to begin with. We need to be careful that we don't use AI so much that we lose skills that are important. AI is coming either way. We need to prepare ourselves for this. Hopefully, we can reap many benefits and minimize disadvantages. AI is not the only problem facing science today. Recent research has shown that someone's parents' income plays a massive role on whether or not they will succeed in science. Check out this video to find out more about the links between socioeconomic status and scientific success.